welcome to Greywood Gardening. It is the second weekend in June and we are finally planting out the butterfly garden. So we built this garden last year. It's about 10 feet wide by 100 feet long. We planted a bunch of stuff in it last year. A lot of that got eaten by the deer, but there's a ton more that needs to get planted up. So we have a bunch of perennials to fill a lot of those holes and also a bunch of annuals because I'm not going to get perennials in everywhere all in one year. So it's a lot of space. We have a plan here. This is the master plan for how the garden's going to get planted so we know exactly where everything's going. And also because we have so many little plugs that uh, we've either bought, bought a couple things from Prairie Moon Nursery, uh, grown a ton of stuff down in the seed starting layer, I'm going to try a new technique for planting this year which is I bought this ginormous auger that you just attach to a drill and then you can drill holes where every plug's going to go without having to kneel or bend over. I mean you'll still have to kneel and bend over when you're planting them but at least you can get all the holes dug this way and I'm thinking for large quantities of plants this might actually speed things up considerably. All right, I'm excited. It is a beautiful morning. It's in the 60s, lower 60s. The high today is 70. It's going to be cool tomorrow. It is great weather for getting these plants in, which is good because I was worried we were going to be stuck in the upper 80s forever, which is a rough time to establish new plants. All right, let's get started. Right, this is Rattlesnake Master. I actually planted five of these last year and it looked like only three of them made it, but they're going really, really strong. Uh, so this plant does really, really well in dry conditions, which we have here. It has kind of a white globe-like flower, but the reason it's here is Rattlesnake Master is the host plant for the black swallowtail butterfly. And because of that, anytime I have uh, caterpillar host plants, I really want a big clump of them. So I got four more of these guys that I'm going to plant in here, replace the two that we lost, and then some. And that should make kind of a nice clump in this area. these uh, last year and I planted these agastache here just way too close to the butterfly weed. And I think what I'm actually going to do is dig them up, transplant them all the way to the back of this section and just fill this entire section up with butterfly weed and then make another similar size section on the other side of the path because this is the host plant for the monarch caterpillar and uh, definitely if there's one butterfly we want to help it's the monarch. Okay, so I am certainly no garden design expert, but what I'm going to try to do so that uh, the butterfly garden doesn't just look like random plants and random flowers is I want to get some flowers that repeat themselves 
um, as you go down the garden. And the way I'm going to do that is I am taking a 10 foot by 10 foot section of the garden. I'm planting it with a bunch of flowers that bloom at different times of the year. And I'm going to plant four identical 10 by 10 blocks as we go down the garden. And so this is going to have uh, echinacea, which I got a few of these in last year. We're going to have more Then a bunch of rubecchia. We have the allium bulbs that are already in. Uh, behind that, we're going to have New England aster, which is already in. We transplanted from elsewhere earlier. Uh, we're going to have some liatris, and then in back, we're going to have goldenrod. And this block only has the goldenrod already in. The others still need it. But for the most part, these repeating blocks will have something blooming throughout most of the year, including very late in the year with the goldenrod and asters. And hope, my hope is that this way, it'll make the whole garden look a little bit more cohesive, a little bit more on purpose, a little bit less completely random, particularly because whenever we have these butterfly host plants, I'm having big clumps of them, and those clumps aren't going to repeat. I'm trying, for the most part, to make the largest clump I can. is working super 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 well uh, it is making everything go a heck of a lot faster this is a big time saver the only challenging part is it's hard to figure out how deep I'm making the holes so I'm sometimes making the holes too deep and we have to backfill it a little bit uh, I got this from a site called power planter I think it's powerplanter.com and uh, they work super well I highly recommend them And we are done. Uh, believe it or not, planting this entire thousand square foot garden took us under two hours. Uh, there were basically three of us working at any given time. Uh, Grandpa Greywood was here and uh, Mrs. Greywood and Grandma Greywood each uh, put in about half of the time. Um, but that's over 200 plants that we put in the ground plus doing a little bit of transplanting and direct seeding. So I think that auger really made a difference. This was just a beautiful day, beautiful blooming meadow, and getting this whole thing planted so quickly was quite a treat. All right, let me turn off the sprinkler on the back side, and I will walk you through the garden and show you everything that's in here. All right, starting up here at the end of the butterfly garden, um, here we have a bunch of rattlesnake master, but it is the host plant for the black swallowtail butterfly. In the back corner, we have a butterfly bush that did, in fact, manage to survive the winter, although maybe isn't looking so great. Um, over here, we have a couple of prairie blazing star. This is a liatris that was in the cottage garden. It wasn't getting enough sun there, so I moved it over here. Behind that, there is a couple of azure sage. All right, and then next up, we have one of these 10 foot by 10 foot blocks. So the 10 foot by 10 foot block has echinacea, which is purple cone flower. Um, then we have rubecchia, black eyed Susan. We have alliums. Then let's see, behind that is New England aster. To the side of that is meadow blazing star, a different kind of liatris. And hard to see, but all the way across the back is stiff goldenrod. That should bloom nicely at the very end of the season. So next to this block, we have an area that is probably a 12 by 10 foot area that's all zinnias. So planted a bunch of pre-started zinnias that were actually in their pots a little too long, they're a little leggy. 
in front of that, all of this dirt is seeded with a couple different varieties of zinnias. Here we have another one of the 10 foot by 10 foot blocks. So up in front here, we have, this is false nettle. So it is uh, like a nettle that doesn't sting. And this is the host plant for comma butterflies and question mark butterflies. I think maybe red admirals too. Uh, behind them is a whole bunch more of that azure sage, uh, which by the way smells exactly like cat urine. So I think the deer are gonna leave it alone. Uh, up in front here, this is pasture rose. This is a native rose. I planted this bare rootstock last fall. It's surviving. We'll see how well it does. It is getting nibbled on a little, um, but hopefully that takes hold. Up in front here, we have downy wood mint. It looks like it's just starting to bloom. The downy wood mint is here mostly to have blossoms a little bit earlier in the year. Um, of course, anything in the mint family, deer will probably leave low. So behind that is a bunch of butterfly weed and that I planted last year. And behind that is a bunch more butterfly weed that I just planted this year. So most of this big block is gonna be butterfly weed. And the very back there is uh, Agastache, also known as Anise Hyssop, that we just transplanted. It was a little further up, moved it further back. And over on the side here, uh, this has been getting eaten quite a bit by the deer, but we have violets um, here on both sides of the path. There's about 50 um, native violets. That is a host plant for all kinds of fritillary butterflies, including the great spangled fritillary. Um, and otherwise, behind the, the uh, violets, we have white prairie clover and purple prairie clover. And clovers are host plants for uh, a lot of these sulfur butterflies, powdered sulfur, orange sulfur, etc. We go to the other side of the path. We have a whole section here that we just planted with butterfly weed. So this should be super impressive. Obviously butterfly weed is a milkweed. It is a host plant for the monarch caterpillars. And so we definitely want lots and lots of monarch uh, host plant here in the butterfly garden. Then we have another one of our 10 foot blocks with the black eyed Susan, the purple coneflower, the allium, the asters, the meadow blazing star, and the goldenrod. Moving down from that, so here in this block, well, first of all, right here, this was from winter sowing, so I didn't get put my head whatever would fit in a milk carton, but this is pearly everlasting. It's got little clumps of tiny white daisy-like flowers, but this is the host plant for the American lady butterfly. Um, and so I think I would like to get this clump larger, so I might uh, just go ahead and winter sow it again next year and at least double the size of that clump. Um, behind that, we have a bunch of uh, annual salvias, and on the other side of them is some different kinds of sage. We have scarlet sage and clary sage. In front of them is uh, chrysanthemums. These were in the cottage garden. We moved them here, and they bloom as eh, sort of end of August and September. Uh, in front of this, we direct seeded uh, nasturtiums. So should be a bunch of nasturtiums along the front. Terrible time of year, by the way, to be direct seeding anything, but this is when we got out. We then have the fourth and final 10 foot by 10 foot block with all the same plants in the same positions. And then we get to the very end. I planted a whole bunch of nicotiana, uh, which is flowering tobacco. I've never grown it before, but it is supposed to be great for pollinators and it's supposed to smell just amazing. Um, behind it, in the dirt there, we actually seeded Tithonia, also known as Mexican sunflower. It's a late blooming, very, very large flower that deer tend to avoid in my experience and butterflies absolutely love. Um, next to that, we have Joe Pieweed. This is a bunch of Joe Pieweed that I planted last year. And then one big one that I planted this year in that spot. Up front here, we have another butterfly weed. And in the very front of this section, we also seeded nasturtium. All right, and with that, that is everything I have for you on this video. Until next time, happy gardening.